At the end of 2021, there was an article published in Christianity Today that cited some surveys and some data that came from the Barna Group. The survey focused on American Protestant pastors, and it was an alarming rate and number of pastors who had considered quitting vocational ministry at some time during the lockdowns and during the pandemic. Here are the numbers. They said four out of 10 pastors in this large group of Protestants considered quitting. That's 38% said they were seriously considering leaving vocational ministry. Now, a further breakdown of the mainline Protestant pastors, over 50% had considered quitting. So it was a smaller group in the mid-30s of those who were of evangelical type of groups or Pentecostal or charismatic, but still it's an alarming number. It's higher than it had ever been in any of the surveys they've done in previous years. So a lot of people are considering quitting the ministry. Why? Before we look at why, uh, I, I wanna consider, it's not just something that's new for our day. Um, I was reading, just my Bible reading this morning, reading in Numbers 11, and I found in the text we're going to look at that even Moses wanted to quit the ministry. Actually, he gave God an option. He said, I either want to quit or I need you to kill me. Um, I don't know how many of these pastors surveyed by Barna were in that desperate of a situation that I need to either quit or die, but there's something going on. Uh, I have a hunch that the passage in Numbers 11 might show us one of the reasons People want to quit ministry. I think it has to do with leading alone. I think it has to do with the folly of leading alone, the danger of leading alone. And a lot of people do lead alone. But during the pandemic, during the lockdown, the inability to lead together in the way that many leaders are used to leading together has exacerbated this idea of, I can't do this any longer. And really, we'll find the words of Moses, I can't do it any longer alone. I can't handle this the way I've had to handle it alone. Therefore, I need a way out. It's sort of what Moses was saying. So I want to look at, first of all, the symptoms of leading alone. We'll see it in, in Numbers 11. Then we want to look at the human solutions for leading alone. And there's some good ones. Then we want to look at the divine solution for leading alone and the results. And some of the results we'll see in this text are really life-changing, and some of them are, are, are problematic. What results when we stop leading alone, okay? Here we go. I want to look at Numbers chapter 11, and I'll just comment as I read. Again, this is what I was reading this morning, and some of these things about leading alone really hit me hard. Okay, verse 11. What's happened is the people had prayed for food, and God miraculously provided, and they rejoiced, and this was wonderful, but as time went on, they're now complaining about the very thing that used to be considered an answer to prayer. They're now complaining about the very thing that they used to see as God's provision, and now they complain about it. That's painful for me because I think I do that sometimes, and I think we'll see in this text, that's what sometimes pastors can possibly slip into that. Verse 11, Moses said to the Lord, Why have you dealt ill with your servant? Why have I not found favor in your sight? that you lay the burden of all this people on me. And I want you to think about those two words, this people. Four consecutive verses are about this people. These people that came out of Egypt, that God used Moses to bring deliverance with great miracles and great manifestations of God's presence and God's power, great answers to prayer. And now he's calling them this people. And so in this, we see the symptoms of leaving alone in these four verses that focus on this people. And the first one is this. When we're leading alone, not sharing ministry, not walking together in a leadership community, when we feel alone, what happens is people become a burden, not a joy. We lose the joy of the communion and the fellowship and the community of leadership God puts us in. And then, like he says here, why have you dealt ill with me? And he talks about, you've laid the burden of this people on me. And oftentimes when leaders are leading alone, they feel the burden of a people, of this particular people. Secondly, we get to verse 12. There's another, this people. Did I conceive 
all this people? Did I give them birth that you should say to me, carry them in your bosom as a nurse carries a nursing child to the land that you swore to give their fathers? This is so packed with leadership misunderstanding, with leadership burdens we take on, again, pertaining to this people. And Moses, as a leader, started seeing the people as the problem, uh, the people as a burden, the people that he has to carry. And he uses the word carry. And he's describing these people as if they're children. And when leaders start seeing people as a burden, and here in verse 12, as people we have to carry, um, it's a sign, it's a symptom that we're doing it alone. When we're doing it alone, instead of as a team, we fill these burdens, and they're really too much. Verse 13, this people again. Verse 13, where am I to get meat to give to all this people. For they weep before me and say, give us meat that we may eat. What this one speaks to me is he's out of answers. He's coming to God and saying, I don't even know what to do anymore. They wanted bread. God miraculously provided bread. Now they want, that's not enough anymore. Now they want this. There's always something else they want. But again, it's the, it's the needs and the wants and a leader alone feeling like I have to provide everything this people needs. Not the way it's supposed to be. Verse 14, I am not able to carry all this people alone. There's that this people again, and there's the alone. Of course he's not able to carry it alone. His father-in-law, his father-in-law Jether already told him that that if you continue to do this alone, you will wear yourself out and the people will wear themselves out back in Exodus 2. Um, it says, I am not able. It's a good place to come as a leader to say, this is beyond my ability. It should have happened a long time ago, actually. I am not able to carry all these people alone. Well, partially because God didn't expect him to. Anytime we do things God doesn't expect us to do, we will feel this way. The burden is too heavy for me. So what are the symptoms of leading alone? One, the people are a burden, not a joy. Two, we complain about the people God has called us to serve. We're no longer thankful for those people. We complain about them. Thirdly, we've run out of answers. We've run out of solutions. We don't even know what to do or say next. Fourth, in verse 14, we realize we can't do this alone. We come to the realization we are alone. We can't do it. It's too heavy. It's beyond our ability. And then verse 15. Here's what Moses finally says to God. If you will treat me like this, kill me at once. If I find favor in your sight, that I may see my wretchedness. What a crazy prayer. God, if, you, if you're going to treat me this way, imagine telling God, you're, you're treating me unjustly, you're treating me unfairly. Moses is going, if you're going to treat me this way, just kill me. Talk about wanting to get out of the ministry. Talk about wanting to get out of leadership. This is radical. But it's a symptom of doing something alone as a leader that no leader, no human is designed to do all of this alone. It's taking the wrong burdens. It's taking others' burdens. It's trying to be a super leader, a solo leader, trying to be the man of God, the woman of God, or all this stuff we're not designed to be or do. Now, what's the solution? Verse 16. The Lord said to Moses, Gather for me seventy men of the elders of Israel, whom you know to be elders of the people and officers over them, and bring them to the tent of meeting, and let them take their stand here with you. God, there's a lot in there. There's a series of sermons right there, but let me get to the human solution. Number one, he said, Get the elders of Israel. Don't look outside. Look in what you already have. Your potential leaders are already there. Your future leaders are right there, hiding in plain sight right in front of you. And then he says, get these elders of the people. In other words, they're already leading something. They're already leading someone. There are people in our midst. No matter what kind of leadership shortage we might have, there are present leaders who are already leading something. Are they mature? Probably not. Are they well trained? Probably not. But are they leading something? Yes. Find those people. Don't, don't, don't look outside the camp. Look inside. They are there. And then he says this at the end, let them take their stand with you. 
not make them take a stand with you, not force them to stand with you. If you have potential future leaders around you and you find yourself pushing them, forcing them, making them, you've got the wrong people. Here's the human solution to this leading alone and this great burden. One, realize all the future leaders you need are already with you. They just don't look like leaders yet. Number two, these future leaders are already leading something. It might not be huge. It might not be massive. It might not be changing the world. They may not be doing it quite well, but they're leading something. Find the leaders in your midst who are leading something and leading someone. And then it says, let them take their stand with you. There are leaders all around you who want to stand with you. Let them do it. Sometimes as a leader, we're too proud to let people stand with us. We're too proud to receive from others. We're too proud to uh, admit our weaknesses and that we actually need younger leaders and people who may not be leadership peers, people who look to us as leaders. Sometimes we're too proud to let them stand with us. They want to stand with us. They will stand with us. They will help carry the weight of the ministry. But the message from God to Moses is, let them do it. Let them lead. If I could just phrase it a little differently, let my people lead. The potential leaders are all around if we would just let them lead. Now watch what God does. Verse 17. He says, if you'll do this, if you'll get these leaders who are already there, those who are already leading something, those who want to stand with you, let them do it. Even if you don't think they're ready. And, verse 17, I will come down and talk with you there. You'll hear God in a new way. And I will take some of the spirit that is on you and put it on them. And they will bear the burden of the people with you. Isn't that what we want? For the potential future leaders around us to get a fresh infilling of the spirit, to catch the spirit God's put on the, the, on the leader, and then to help stand with us and help lead with us. And it says, so that you may not bear it yourself. And there's that word again, alone. Leaders were not supposed to bear the burden alone. There are people all around us and God wants to put his hand on those so they can stand with us and shoulder the weight with us if we'll just let them do it. Now, I want to skip over to verse 24. And you see what Moses does when God tells him this. He says, and so he gathered these 70 the 70 elders of the people, and he, he placed them uh, around the tent. Then, verse 25, the Lord came down in the cloud and spoke. And he took some of the spirit that was on Moses and put it on the 70 elders. And as soon as the spirit rested on them, they prophesied. And then it says, but after that moment, they didn't prophesy again. And then it goes down there, these two guys, I love these names. In verse 26, these two guys, Eldad and Medad. El dad and me dad. It says the spirit rested on them and they continued to prophesy when the others stopped. So what happened was some of these old school leaders, some of those who had been with Moses a little longer, it says in verse 29, they got jealous. So listen, when you empower leaders around you, some of the old school might get jealous. Some people who had the solo, whatever positions, might not really be happy that a lot of other upstarts are taking leadership positions. There might be some of this jealousy. They might try to shut them down. But still, let them lead. Multiply leadership. There's no reason to carry leadership alone. There's no reason to buckle under the weight of ministry. None of us are designed by God to lead alone. Find the leaders in your midst. Find the leaders who are doing some kind of leadership. Trust them. Let them stand with you. Let them carry weight with you. Watch what God will do in the midst of our doing the best we can to identify and empower leaders. May God multiply leaders all around your ministry and your life.